Welcome to the Margie and Lisa Show. I'm Margie Wigan. I'm Lisa Jackson, and we're hoping that you'll actually join the conversation tonight, either via Facebook or to you can call in. Um, we would love to have you um, talk about the your opinion on our topics tonight. Yep, our phone number is 508-435-7880. We're going to start by talking about what's happening with Hopkinton Town Hall. Then we're going to talk about the Super Bowl. And our last topic is going to be a State of the Union address. Um, how we doing? So uh, starting off with what's happening with Town Hall, I was not able to um, have Norman Kamala come in or... Brian Herr, um, I had reached out to both of them. They're very busy, as we know. But I do have some responses for, uh, to my questions. So if any of you watching know more than we know, mm -hmm. we'd love to have you call in or, or share your thoughts um, on the subject. So <laughs> what um, my question to them was, what's happening? And are we possibly going to use center school for any of the buildings? I've heard that one thought was to keep it at 80 South because they like it so much over there. Both Norman and Brian Hurst said that's not happening. Um, so the goal is to get it into the center of town. And then if they need to access other space, then they would look into other possibilities. I'll just read to you exactly what said. Norman said. Um, so Norman <clears throat> said, so I said, you know, is there a possibility or I said, what is happening? And he said, our plan is, this is a quote from Norman Kamal, our plan is to return town offices and services to town hall as soon as the repairs and upgrades are complete. While we value keeping town offices in one location for the benefit of residents and businesses, we will continue to seek space for offices and services that cannot be accommodated at town hall. I know that at 80 South Street, where they have all of that space, Yeah that they've been very comfortable expanding. Right, you and know, when and I've gone into town hall and talked to the people that work in town hall, they're like, we are getting spoiled. I mean, exactly. and it is a beautiful space and there's tons of parking. It's, right. it's, it's a little off the middle of town, so it, it, oh, it feels yeah. a little strange being on the other side of town. Yeah. I'm so used to town hall that way, but I think, you know, our town hall is so old. You know, hopefully with the revisions, it'll it, they'll be able to accommodate all the space. I remember yeah, they were I, tight I, before. Yeah, that's not, so. It's not a consideration. To yeah. Have it oh, all, of course. All. So of they course. want in the center. Um, and one of the other thing that's great about 80 South Street is the person at the desk is able to buzz you in. Right. You know, so there is kind security, of security. Right. Security and also direction right. instead of people wandering well, in and out of the space. Well, you can't see when you go in the old town hall, like you just, you kind of walk in that yeah. lobby and there's the elevator and you're not quite sure. Not I mean, sure can, where to go. Yeah, where, where to go and the right. treasurer's office is on the right. Right. You know, so it's it's a little, you know, it's an old town hall. I yeah. go to a lot of town halls Which and it's, cute. yeah. But I think what's, <clears> I think the great thing, I mean, I try to look for the good thing when bad things mm -hmm. happen. So clearly the pipes bursting is not what we would have wanted. Right and, right, and papers getting ruined and offices flooded and people moving right. out. But having had that happen, right. they can now look at or reassess, right. what do we need? What's working? What didn't work? Right. You know, what m we have doubled in size over the past right. however and many years. And then also assess what they have in their offices. I mean, I know when I was younger and I moved a lot, it was good to kind of go through your stuff and mm -hmm. see what's needed, what you need to hold on oh, to, sure. what can go Purge. into storage. Yeah. And I think that's also another benefit of, you know, then them relocating for a little bit and then moving back in. But it's a right. lot of work. That takes away from their time that they actually do their job for the town. But also our town has increased in size since they, you know, in, over the last you know, 20 years. So I think, you know, that's why we're feeling the, the bursting of the well, town Well, there needs to be more personnel because there are more things sure, that have to, to do. be handled. Yeah. And also, I think um, the planning board has had more plans oh, to have sure. to deal with. Oh, sure. Oh, big and, time. And the, you know, where it is you go to get your permits for building permits, yep. they're going to have to have, you know, Chuck Cadillac, Right. Uh, building inspectors probably have to had to hire an assistant just because it's so just crazy. all the plans and all the changes in yeah. the zoning and everything. So Brian Herr's mm -hmm. response, I said, would center school be a good place to have some town offices? Because, again, that's in the middle. Right. So my my opinion is and you could walk. I mean, you it's, have yeah. some people in the existing town hall and clearly renovate it. Yep. Um, I think it should. It's a beautiful building. I would never want to knock it down and put a new 
ugly thing there. Right. I you think know, it's so, a neat old. So town yeah. hall renovated. Oh, Pat's watching on Facebook and gave us a like. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Hi, Pat. <laughs> and um, so then <clears throat> center school still in the center of town. Yep. Could have some offices in the front. Sure. You know, Parks and Rec and Youth Commission. And it's uh, easy to youth, get, yeah. Youth uh, Center in the back is my right. opinion. But so Brian Hur's response to the center school question was, it's a definite possibility, hard to say for sure. Right. You know, because the center school committee, which is meeting on they have a Saturday, Saturday, 10 a.m. An open to forum. To talk to people, yep. um, which is a whole different topic because we're not doing center school. But they want input from the town. Sure. And that's one thought um, that would be good. And then um, Brian said also, I feel strongly as we get ready for all the road and sidewalk work downtown that we keep as much energy downtown as possible. I totally I agree. agree. I and agree. and even the Main Street Corridor project concerns me because it sounds like people are going to zip right through right. and not have mm. any kind of center to our town. Right. Um, Brian mm. says, I like Town Hall where it is. Me too. And expect that is where it will stay. I'm fine with relocating some departments to another location, sure. if that makes sense, from a customer service perspective and financially for the taxpayers. Um, the other thought I had was a lot of the school um, administration offices are at that White House, right. which we're renting. Right. Oh, so, if so we, we could put use some center of the school. school department things in Save the, the town school, money. Part of the town, right, save the town money. And especially yep. now where there seems to be too much money being spent and right. hard, you know. They're, they're well, why not of, be economic about it and think about the way what's best for our community? But also, like, I think center school, I go to communities all over the state. Many communities have done that, used old schools for course. town offices. And yeah. not all town offices are located. In, in fact, most of my health departments are not always located in the town hall. So I, it's very common across Massachusetts that you use a few buildings. Yeah. I know people get a little hung up that it should be in the same building. But, you know, I think, you know, center school, in my opinion, would be a great use right. for other town offices. I totally agree. So if mm. you guys watching at home have any opinions on where you think town hall should go what offices you think might go where just feel free to join the yeah. conversation that's why we're doing this so we'll have a community conversation not just us talking the whole time right. um and again please remember the center school reuse committee has a meeting february 3rd which is saturday morning 10 a.m you have plenty of time before the super bowl to go there yes. i'm pretty sure it's at the senior center it is, they're yeah. looking for input Yep. So if you can go, I'm not going to be able to, but if you can go, give them your feedback. They really want it to be a community-based idea, not one person who says, oh, let's convert it to a hotel, right. but nobody else has a chance to say anything. Okay, so that's really important. Right. Um, yeah, so, and I guess there's a survey up on HopkintonMA.gov as well. There is. I took so the survey, and it was pretty good. We mailed it to everyone. Yeah, So yeah. if you sent, I just sent mine in yesterday. Yeah. So if you, if you sent yours in, great. If you go on HopkintonMA.gov yeah. and do the survey there, that's great. Really, you shouldn't do more than one survey, just one per person. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> or go to the meetings even better. Right. But back to town hall. So, um, I know, I mean, as it was. Yeah. You walked in, as you said, there's an empty space elevator. Yep. Yep. Then you took a left, and yep. there's the treasurer's office the clerk's where you office, pay your parks and rec bills, and, yep. and then straight ahead, town clerk in the corner. <laughs> and and honestly, if I didn't know where things were, I would have no idea where to go. Oh, yeah. So I one thought I hope is that they have um, some kind of directory. Sure. You know, which floor to go to. And It'd I be really so think, easy to do, right, yeah, or in the foyer in. there. Yeah, checking in at that mm -hmm. foyer, they could definitely put a desk right there. Sure. And then, like, you check in at the one on South Street, right. check in with a the person. They could tell you where to go. Right. They could call and see if the Board of Health person is at their desk and exactly. ready to see someone or they're busy. Right. You know, or call up and, and ask Maria Glenn if she can, whatever she needs what, to do. Whatever you need Town to do. Town clerk. Yeah. yeah. I think that, and even if, say, we do use another building, then that person could also direct them to the other building and say, oh, we're sorry, the, you know, the building department moved over. You know what I mean? So I think it'd be nice. I mean, and I know it's cost, but if we eliminate the cost of the school building across the street from the middle school, I think it would, you know, we could, well, uh, we could shift the renovate. budget. They're already going to renovate center school. Right. It's just a question of what they do with it. Right. 
And, you know, again, if we're mm -hmm. already paying rent at the White House right. for it the seems school silly to... department offices. Right. Why not use... Let's Sorry use for whoever we already owns have. the White House. But, well, <laughs> yeah, you know. You know. I mean, trying to save money, I don't think they should cut teacher positions, which they are doing. Yeah, um, I didn't I know that. I personally think that they should put it in, you know... Well, reassess their budget. I have to do that with my household. You have to do it with your household. It's, it's yeah. pretty, you know, a mandatory. Right. So, well, the town hall was interesting, too, before. And I, I have a... I hadn't been there in much in the last few years, but they had the whole basement that they didn't really utilize. Cause I At think town hall. Yeah. Oh no, there are meetings Did, in there all the time. Oh, uh, well, I know there's meetings, but maybe they could put offices in the basement and stuff in the town hall. That so, space. Um, they actually used a lot of it for, for board of health yep. files. Yep. And then we had youth commission meetings there. Yep. And then there's a kitchen. Um, Mike, thanks for, for emailing us, Mike wants to see the town manager, clerk, and land use inspectional services in town hall and have the other offices in center school with the school administration and a youth center. That makes, I totally agree, Mike. That's a great idea. That's a good org chart yeah, for that. Exactly. Yeah, everybody kind so of is intermingled mm -hmm. in the yep. right way. Yeah, because, I mean, really, most of the business people do when they go to town yeah. hall is with town manager, the town clerk, yep. and, that, and the... Um, financial office well and i also think the businesses you know, will benefit from more traffic being there so instead yeah. of someone just parking behind town hall which feels kind of a little bit like a you know cave back there if they're parking on the main street or over at center school or by the park maybe they would spend some time in other parts of town go to lunch or, or whatever you mm -hmm. know go you know go for a walk or because i know whenever i go to communities that i work in if i have a little extra time i'll go stop have a cup of coffee or tea or i'll, I'll walk around and check out the area so i think you know by having that little bit of a spread may make our community more inviting for us <laughs> that yeah. live here but also there's a lot of there's police officers that come to our town hall there's ins inspectors from other communities sure. there's people for town business meetings that happen meetings and all kinds of stuff and we have a beautiful downtown yeah so well the other thing is if i think in terms of parking being a challenge for us in town hall yeah if there was parking behind center school sure that's municipal parking absolutely and people are going to town hall for their municipal business and yep. they say, hey, there's parking back here. Right. You know, hey, there's parking around the, the common. Right. That's a way to get people, you know, into a different habit. I think people right. form a habit. Right, and, and they're, walking they're, across. They're used yeah. to parking in front of bills yeah. to go to town hall, behind bills to go to town right. hall. And there's now, not a lot of parking. if there are two places to go, yeah. then they park around the common, yeah. behind center school, starting a new habit formation. Yeah. Um, that beautiful stone house that's yes. for sale, maybe that becomes <laughs> a, a combination restaurant right um, something yeah. yoga studio right right indian restaurant that you is know, a so cool maybe house that becomes, I mean, a, 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 maybe another that becomes a attraction for downtown right, so that you just enlarge and enhance the downtown yeah. instead of have it be all you know, right bill's pizza pan thai right pan thai. right so anyway. i think it just expands the opportunity and then the summary of the farmer's market and there's a lot of reasons exactly. To go downtown, you right. have the, you know, you have the Bittersweet Cafe, and you have a lot of places sure. that are, and Happy then maybe those li those little, you know, businesses downtown right. will do better. Well, and, and, right, and so what I'm saying is, if we're expanding this way, yeah, then I think it brings it back into the model that they would have had when the town was founded, because yeah. the town center, so that's how it's that, supposed that to be, that common, yeah. would have been where everyone, where the action was, right, you know, right, and um, not spread out, and you know, I think it's, yeah, that's what a town center should be, and I think it's, it's actually a wonderful opportunity for us to utilize some of the space that we have, right, and that, and the center school is beautiful, I mean, oh, it's it another is? beautiful old building, right, you know? and it and, just needs renovation on the yeah. inside, and the heating, I know, when my kids were little, yeah, um, I remember they, Celia they too. were up in that third floor hot box <laughs> right. of a classroom, and then it was cold and, and it was freezing. <laughs> so yeah, so it's you know they need, need some sure. upgrade, but it's a beautiful space, yeah, and it it's is. got that great statue up front, you right. know, and and so even you know around marathon time, it would be wonderful to have that be 
um, a really an active, beautiful space. Right. Because um, we used to go into the basement for the pancake breakfast. Oh, um, right. I never went ago. to a vice out. Yeah. Great, <laughs> but they don't do that anymore. Uh, um, so, so plus we'd have more meeting space. I know that's a premium. We, yeah. And 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 downtown. libraries need yeah. space too. Right. Now. So again, that kind of brings us that downtown revitalization and exactly. really a community center. Yes. All right, so you said that you've been to some different town halls and yes. some good and bad things about the ones we've sort of been talking about that. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it's a little tricky getting around because I go to town halls all over the state to go to meetings and things like that, like North Shore, South Shore, mm -hmm. West, wherever. And it's always kind of a little bit tricky to, to know where you're going. But actually downtown how can be very simple because it's you have one address right you know and then you'd have the center school right. and then if you had someone that or a directory even a simple map directory or how about a sign yeah that says town hall yeah town hall, or, or town these offices annex, or yeah town hall annex or right. something or. and it, it's very commonplace i know people get yeah. a little hung up being in one spot but nowadays with computers you know people can communicate back and forth via email on the phone even if they're in a, the same building chances are they're communicating that way anyway so I think a lot of people that are old school want everybody kind of clustered together. But really, and then, you know, well, I, and I, I know a lot of the old school people that work at the town halls. Well, they like split things up. the way it used to be. Yeah, they, they like but, it. They're like the town hall and they want to stay there and they want everybody close by. And, you know, and maybe citizens or residents want that. But still, I think... That's just the nature of what, well, what we're, what's happening. We're exactly. old New England towns, and mm -hmm. we're growing in population. Yeah. And, and to adapt to that, I think, right. you know, I utilizing think, the space that we have. Yeah, and that's the point is we are double the size or triple the size we were. Yeah. You know, when I moved here in 98. Yeah, well, in 2000. Twice, yeah. Because I was here from uh, 86 to 91. Oh. Then I moved out, but I lived on the lake. Yeah. So 86 to 91, I didn't usually head into the center downtown, I, I yeah. went more to milford because i was on that end of town gotcha. so but you know 98 we moved back in yeah and it's at least double tripled right since then Absolutely. so it's not the same it, the town hall that as it existed is is no longer right i can't hold the capacity option. of right, what they exactly. what the needs of the community are right especially since they've been I want to say spoiled right. by the facilities right. that they've had. You know, and granted, um, it's a big space with cubicles. Right. Everyone's in a cubicle. Right. But we don't even have that ability right. in the town hall that we have now. Right. Unless you were to put the yeah, cubicles. Yeah, because all the rooms, yeah. If you put the cubicles in the basement. Right. And you get those files out of their basement somewhere else. Right. The Board right. of Health files. Right. Um, no, so I know. It's, it's challenging. Be... But I think it's, you know, please, you know, give your input. Do the survey. Yeah. Go 10 o'clock, senior center. Yeah, go to the senior center at Saturday. 10 o'clock. And I think I'm sure the committee would take input okay. in other, other other avenues. So if you have an idea or, you know, I know we talked about what our ideas are, but if you guys have an idea, please make it known. So, you know, again, this is a community decision to do what's best for yeah. our community. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the committee is not supposed to make that decision. Right. There's those five people are supposed to represent us, right. but they can't represent us unless we say, "Hey, this is what we want." Right. So make sure you make sure you make your voice heard. Right. That's how our government works. So this is the end of this segment. Yep. So the next segment will be about the Super Bowl, very yep. patriotic, um, and talking about the Patriots. Yep. So and please, please call in, yep. or you can um, email live at hcam.tv. Let us know your thoughts. It comes up on my screen here, and then we talk about it. You don't have to use your real name if you don't want to, um, <laughs> but we would like you as part of the conversation. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Hello, my name is Rick Flannery, and I am the chair of the Center oh, School awesome. Review yes, Advisory Committee. Okay. With the upcoming opening of the Marathon Elementary School in the fall of 2018, the Board of Selectmen formed the Center School Reuse Advisory Team to explore the future of Center School. We will recommend a plan for the center school building and property that will provide outside viewpoints on its use and development. This plan will outline the community's vision, your vision, for the future use of the property and produce recommendation for the board's consideration. Here at HCAM, they have asked you, what would you do if someone gave you a television station? The center school reuse advisory team is asking, what would you do with a school building? Please come and share your vision for the future of Center School with us at the first public forum 
on Saturday, February 3rd, 2018 at 10 a.m. at the Hopkins Senior Center. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you there. This week, I'll wake up and smell the poetry. You listen to the songs and sounds of Kate Chadbourne. Welcome back. Yes, yeah, so I we're... just had to ask Mike to show you this awesome shirt. Yeah. Dilly Dilly. Woo! Go Pats. Go Pats. Go Pats. Go Pats. Yeah. A few more days. We're ready. I know. So I do you back. think it's going to be another Thank cliffhanger, Mike, while we they, have you on they here? Always, they always make they, the They love them. It's know? like the, the Red Sox did that too for a long time. Right. Oh, great. I got to go All back right, to work. Yeah, okay. Thank dilly you, Mike. Dilly Dilly. Dilly Dilly. Yeah. What does that really even mean? So how about those Pats? Yep. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, that game last week was, like, unbelievable. Yes, it was. You know, like, I swear, I, I, (laughs) with, what, six minutes to go, I thought, (sighs) it was, you know, yes, they're a good team, and and Belichick and Brady were spending, you know, yeah, Yeah. we're up against a tough competitor. No, we're up against a tough competitor. Right. And I was, I don't know, we're going to do our best. You know, whatever he does. Stone face, right. but he but he was right. I mean, they really were an right. amazing competitor, and it was a great game. Yep. You know, although I have to say, I thought there were some dirty hits. There I think were, that uh, hit on Gronkowski, yeah, Gronk, the that, headbutt, that's that's dirty. Yeah, that's a dirty hit. You're not so, supposed to do that. You know, if that's how you take the Patriots down, you have you can't play clean. Right. That, that's not the best. And it's so dangerous for someone's life. Unbelievable. I mean, that's like, yeah. You I can't. was just. <gasps> Yeah, I couldn't that's believe a the guy. And, yeah. and P.S. How does the guy walk away from hitting his head on Gronkowski? How does he even? It's right. like his hitting a brick wall with his head. Exactly. I don't know. So. And it's just it's like not hitting below the knees, not hitting heads. I mean, that's you have to be so careful. Yeah. I mean, and that should have been a penalty. I don't remember. Did they penalize him? I don't think he nope, did. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did so not. I mean, that's a big deal. Nope. I mean, like, so not that we want a penalty, but really they penalize him because they don't want injuries of our players or yeah. anybody's players or any yeah. NFL yep. players. And he, watching Gronk react to that hit, yeah. and he's just kind of like, oh, yeah. I thought, he oh, no. He got rattled, oh, no. yeah. You know, and then so he went off. Yep. Um, I heard as of today he suited up. Okay. But he's still in the concussion protocol. Right. Um, we have till Saturday. Right. Uh, so that would that's two weeks. Yep. From when he got hit. Yep. So there's hope, but yeah, I would never want Gronkowski to play for the sake of right winning because we can well, win without him. Right. And then damage his brain and get see right. whatever that's called CTE yeah. concussion. Oh yeah, syndrome. Well, we don't at, want him to be like Muhammad Ali or yeah, and, and yeah, and like Junior Aaron Seau or yeah. Aaron Hurston. We don't want that to right. happen. Gronkowski is such a great guy. Right. I would just be. I would be beside myself. Right. It's if that like were that happened. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think Belichick and Brady. I don't think the team Robert Kraft. I don't think they're going to choose winning over Gronkowski's no, health. They seem to be pretty responsible. Yeah. So with they're going to make sure because we they, we have a great team. I mean, and our our coach is amazing. Brady's amazing. So people, that's probably the strength of our team is that we can adapt to whatever the situation is: losing right. a player, gaining a player, whatever. Right. They, I think they really utilize all their tools very well. So. And they have a big tool mm-hmm. belt. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I think of Amendola, who has been, you know, back when we had right. Welker and Edelman and Amendola, those were the three yep. before Gronkowski came. Right. And they were, that was a powerful threesome. Right. And then Welker, actually Welker took a few too many hits the last games. It was making me nervous. Right. And he got traded away. Edelman must be, you know, injured. Yeah. Um, but Amendola... It's a who hard... is the one catching the fair catch. Yes. He's been the fair catch guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then that they went amazing. to him, yeah. you know, and they have cooks and they have these other people now who are new. Yep. But but Amandola is so reliable. Right. You know, I was listening to he was talking on I forget which probably WBZ News Radio. Yeah. Talking about how when he was little, he used to you know, put the stretch bands in his garage and like run against the stretch bands because he so was so he just he's lives always, and breathes football. Always been this guy, yeah, yeah, you know, and just so steady. So they've that. got a they've got a deep 
yes. selection of running backs receivers and, and, and receivers wide receivers. And, receivers and, and, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, you know, Vince Wolfork, we miss him yeah. because – he was kind of that big guy, right. that brick That's wall. why I think they go to Gronk, because he's so big, it's hard to but take him down. But he was the defender, so right. I think Brady's taking more hits now oh, than yeah. he used to, because Will Fork would I know. be the wall. Right. But somehow, Brady's able to get out of that, right. and the injury to his hand was in practice on a pass you right. know, to um, to somebody. I don't, they, they didn't really want to say who it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's got some cuts. Right. Um, but I couldn't believe how he played with that injury it's too. A, it was a cut. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and he went from the went from the red gloves, which are a lot of protection. Yes. To now a special black glove. Right. You know, so so it's clearly getting better. Right. He doesn't want to make a, a big hard deal. That's Because I use my hands a lot, like even riding. And if yeah. I have a cut, when you're using your hands all the time, that's not and the, and so the, easy. It was right, yeah, saw right on, on the thumb. thumb. Yeah. So if he's got a yeah. flex, you know, a right hand, I think. Yeah, flex it was the thumb. right hand, yeah. Um, but he feels like, you know, again, he's unbelievable. they're yeah. so cautious. Yeah. And they don't want to focus on the negative. They right. never want to focus on the negative. They also never, like, hey, we're so great. No. They, so they just they even killed and that even, even I love that persona or yeah. that that image that they put forward. It's so yep. humble. And yes, so, exactly. you know, like they're humble to the other teams. Exactly. You know, and I think maybe that's why they're good. They don't let it go to their head. They they have healthy right. respect for the other right. teams. They yep. they truly respect them. They're not just giving lip service. Absolutely. But they're saying, you know, like we see that, I mean, they're NFL teams that they're going against and they're like, wow, look at these guys. Right. You know, we do have to bring out all the stops for every team. And yeah. I think, you know, they, they're not lazy. They're not, they're not arrogant. They're, no, they're and very humble. Exactly. And I think, you know, given their track record, I mean, I think it would be very easy for them to be a little arrogant or a little, you know, complacent with other teams. If anybody could be. Right. It would be them. Right. I know. I, think I keep I surprising. Said... I keep, uh, so some of the funny stuff I saw when Brady hurt his hand, they showed an x-ray of an extra finger to be I saw it too. Which I thought was funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, so I'm there's been good. some funny stuff that they've been posting. Which like the Bill Belichick trip light. shirts and, yeah. you know what I mean? So there's been. A lot of really funny patriot stuff that I've been seeing out there that I love that it's they just kind of make a joke out of it yep so um I think the other thing that's that's kind of noteworthy is in Minneapolis yes. Minnesota it's going to be zero ish right on it, Sunday at game time it, not even it could be below zero right that's Minnesota um, yeah <laughs> yeah Saturday's supposed to be snow yep um you know and then I think uh the other thing little thing was Brady had the practice without the glove yes. two nights. Then he wore the glove again, but the commentator that was talking from Minneapolis said that he went to give Brady a handshake, and he said, oh, you know, I don't want to squeeze you too hard. Brady's like, I'm fine. Yeah. And he gave him a firm <laughs> handshake. Yeah. Yeah. So he, I think they're just erring on the side of caution, of course. which is smart. Yeah, and you want it to heal properly. The hand is so delicate. Like, yeah. if you don't want scars or anything to mess anything up. But I, you know, I understand for someone that uses hands for sports, like riding horses and stuff. Well, we all understand. Yeah, that. you know, it's just like you, you want to be extra careful. But yeah. I, I've been enjoying watching him talk about the game. And, and he's so humble and he's so gracious and... You know, like, I, I just love his presence. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's just a great representation of sportsmanship. Well, he's and a good role model for kids, too. He really is. Yeah. He really is. The other is. thing was, which, um, and it, there's just such a human, uh, just such a heartwarming thing with him and his mom, yeah. who was fighting cancer. Yes. And, and beat the cancer and yeah. was there to give him a big hug at right. last year's oh Super Bowl. Oh, my God, yes. That and was then huge. with her scarf on because yeah. you knew she had gone through chemo and lost her hair. Yeah. And then Robert Kraft gave her a Super Bowl ring. Right. Because she, yeah. you know, just well, was she sort lived, of part yeah. of the, the team. That's huge. And I guess um, Belichick has seven rings, I think, and Brady has five, unless I flip that. No, that's but correct. Yeah. Belichick assisted he was Parcells, with, Parcells with the Green Bay Packers when they right, won. Right, and then Patriots when they won with Drew Bledsoe. Yep. Because he was on, he was, uh, I think, offensive or def defensive line coach yeah. with, with the Patriots then. But, you know, it's just so, so part of me was kind of funny, um, I, Minnesota, I, I love because, you know, they're the Vikings and I'm Swedish or whatever. It's kind of silly, but, but, you know. I have Viking ancestors. Yeah, exactly. So, like, but I, I thought it would be nice for them to be able to play the Super Bowl. Nothing against the Eagles. 
you know, like fair game, but I was kind of rooting for for Minnesota to be able to play. I know, I the agree, Super it's Bowl their stadium. in their I stadium. Agree. So, oh like, yeah, we all were. I think. So have you seen the stuff that I think is funny? So like they won't um, in the Eagles in Philadelphia, they won't serve Boston cream pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're like, I think it's so funny with the food, food that yeah, tussling I back and some... forth, and like here we won't do Philly cheesesteaks, and I'm like enjoying all the kind of the fun banter of funny. back and forth. So I they talked about that too on the news they said that um the food at the stadium and by the way um minnesota is apparently going to be five degrees and the super bowl is in a 65 degree domed stadium right so they're not outside and fine. that's another good thing for tom brady's hand because yes. you know how you when your fingers cold. are cold and you get hit in the hand yeah. it hurts anyway it does hurt. so we don't have to worry about that right but um but the chef in the stadium is actually from um He's Fenway from, Park. He, right. So right, his I name remember. is James Maney, or M E H N E. He's a chef from Fenway Park. He's talking about having a Philly pork sandwich. He's talking about New England clam rolls and clam chowder. Yeah. And and then he said something about jalapeno cheese curds. I don't know why. <laughs> that's that's Minnesota. That's 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 kind of weird. That's Scandinavian. That's okay. in Idaho. You cheese have that. Yeah. So cheese curds. So my mom that, sends them to me every all right, Christmas. All right. So that's yeah. so there it is. <laughs> that's jalapeno, Minnesota. Who knew? <laughs> jalapeno cheese curds. So they're having the food conversation. Oh, it's kind I love of fun. It. And then they talked about stores, tourist attractions for people who are going there. Right. And my sister, I don't think she's watching, but she's in St. Paul, oh. Minnesota. So um, the, in the in Minneapolis, there's the Stone Arch Bridge, which spans the Mississippi River. I forget that the Mississippi runs through right. there. Right. I forgot and then about that too. Something called the First Avenue Club, which is where Prince did a lot of his performing that's oh you in know, the mall of america a mall and, of america's yeah. there and then there's some giant sculpture garden and so, there's lakes and ponds and trails oh, yeah. i mean like minnesota is like outdoor heaven so yeah. i have friends that live there and they're like lisa you got to come out here because there's hiking and yeah. cross-country skiing and snowshoeing yeah. but and another they, thing i wanted to kind of mention is the cost for people to go. So it's been interesting. Like, I saw on the news some lady rented out her... her Airbnb? It, no, she rented out her, her RV for a whole bunch of people to drive out there because it was cheaper to between oh. the flights and the hotel. They say it's like my That's uncle... That's a good idea. My, I know, I know. And my uncle um, is going out there, and it's going to cost him over $10,000, which oh. for him and his son. Do we get some comments? We got a comment. <laughs> Fun fact, Justin Timberlake without Janet Jackson and the removable costume, will perform in the <laughs> halftime show. We mean the Pepsi Super Bowl 52 halftime show, side note. Yeah. Performers are not paid for performing during halftime of the no game. No kidding. Since exposure from a TV audience is considered Huge. compensation. And P.S., they get to be at the Super Bowl. Right. Isn't I mean, that... like, who wouldn't want to? I've never gone to a Super I know. Bowl. I've gone to a lot of Patriots games, but not the Super Bowl. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't know they weren't. But that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I knew it was Justin Timberlake, but I don't think he's performing with anyone. Right. And then there was, well, that, some, there was some kind of conversation <laughs> about that fiasco, and I didn't hear that whole end of what exactly happened there. Right. Um, Pink is going to perform the national anthem. Yeah, I saw she that. She was born in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, outside of Philly. So it's it's so cool. I mean, that's this cool. is this is I mean. I think one of the things that happens with sports yeah, is we, in these times where there's so much stress and yeah. bad news and yeah. bad, you People, know what I'm saying, yeah. you know, and then this is just where we, it brings can all, everybody together. we can all celebrate and, you know, it's, it's vicarious battle, really. Right. So vicariously, right. you know, lunging for the ball and do we get the ball, do we not Right, and ball? think so, of all the Super Bowl parties. Everybody comes together. Yeah, There's party. different people, especially in Boston. Yep. I have friends from all over the country, so like you see people, and we're, I mean, granted, Patriots fans are a little rough with the heckling, but you know. No. <laughs> no, that's justified. <laughs> right. But I hear Eagles fans are worse. I What's saw, that saying? I saw in the news that they were actually putting Crisco on the lampposts <laughs> so people wouldn't climb up the lampposts during the parade. That's, a, well, that's like, just a safety. Yeah, you know, exactly. You need, but you I need mean, to like, the they put it on the news, and I was laughing so hard that <laughs> the DPW guys are out there. We should have <laughs> yeah, put the, the Crisco on the. <laughs> so I have some more fun facts. Thank you, fun fact checkers. Yes. A 30 second spot 
at the Super Bowl, those we love the Super Bowl commercials. Oh, I yes. can't wait to I love crack them. up. Yep. Um, estimated to top five million. No way for thirty which seconds. Which is yes, which is more. Someone did some math than one hundred sixty-six thousand per second. Just to have where's the beef or whatever the latest wow. funny. Wow. Oh, that was funny. Yeah. I know. Wow. Yeah. And then this is the second time the game is in Minneapolis. Yep. It is the furthest north the game has been played. The Super Bowl has been played in 10 states. Miami and New Orleans have each hosted the game 10 times. No kidding. The I didn't know The pregame toss, yep. coin toss, has landed on tails 27 times and heads 24 times. Hmm. Ah. I'm thinking tails. New yeah. England is two to seven in tosses, while Philadelphia is two to nothing. Oh. Oh. Hmm. I love those statistics. Inter- I know, I, I do too. I it so Not interesting. trying to figure out the odds of this. Right, right. This is, yeah. Keep those facts coming. We find it so interesting because <laughs> it's like, well, I, what I've heard is the five-point spread. Okay. Yeah, so like I hear there's a five-point spread. Yep, and I hadn't heard that. that the good. Patriots are going to win. Only five. five. Yeah. Cool. But I don't know if they're factoring in that Gronk might not be in there, that Brady's hand was hurt, but that well, may change. I mean, that, and I love how um, Bill Belichick doesn't share a lot of information yep. until he has to. He shouldn't. Yeah. We love and that. And I think, I think we that's, love that. yeah, we do. I'm the sure stone. other teams don't, yeah, I love it, but I think it's face. funny. Yeah, he's funny. So, so NBC reportedly will have 106 cameras at the game and 50 Whoa. miles worth of camera and microphone cable. Whoa. This sounds like some people that might like cable would be checking this information. Right. The network will have more than 500 workers on site. Whoa. Huh. That's cool. Wow. The other thing I heard today <laughs> on, the, on the news was that the people, the Philadelphia Eagles team yep. was coming in like they were on vacation and they were sightseeing and compared to the Patriots who were hard serious. at work yeah, yeah, and, they're and serious. training. And Do you think Bill Belichick's going to let them go no, like sightseeing? No way. <laughs> No, I would want to. I'd be yep. like sneaking out at night. Yep, <laughs> and obviously one of the most important statistics is the age of our quarterback. 40. 40, um, but, you know, some people run 10 years younger than their actual age. Right. And apparently he thinks that you just drink a lot of water and and it does whatever right. you need to do. Genetics and, you know. Genetics is big. Yeah. Tom Brady. Well, the other thing I think, I mean, he's still working out the same way so i think what happens to people in life is right they get get a job they sit down they're sitting in their cars they're sitting at their desk he's how when does he sit that's what he does he's i mean i know myself i do a lot of sports still but i have to work for it like i have to exercise all the time so i can snowboard skateboard do all and it's his job to be in shape it's just like oh yeah if i was getting paid that much money i would be in tip top of course and and i and i think of actresses and models and whatever it's their job to look good yeah so they have the trainer and the Right. whatever and, and the, the dietitian yeah everybody doing so everything. we all could look great if we had just that to worry about so um, i think more than 70 official footballs are used during the game wow and there will be no deflate conversation <laughs> deflate <game>. <laughs> because <laughs> it's an indoor game and right. the balls will not be deflated because right. of the cold air right. oh you have to I have one more thing yeah yeah go mayors ahead, in yeah. philadelphia and brockton massachusetts have a rocky bet going i did hear this Uh-oh. each city has a statue of a famous rocky boxer Rocky Balboa in Philadelphia, yep. Rocky Marciano in New England, yep. in Brockton. The loser <laughs> is going to have to drape their statue in the winner's apparel. So I heard that Rocky Marciano yep. in Brockton is going to have to have a Phillies outfit, <laughs> Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. I mean. And then um, Rocky Balboa. And Rocky have Balboa to have has the, to. Ah. I would love to see Rocky Balboa Me too. in I a think Patriots Rocky shirt. Balboa. I think he would look good in that. So, yeah. but. Lots of fun talking about the Patriots, yep. and we're going to take a break, go and Pats. we'll be back. Yay, go Pats! This week on Wake Natalie Up and Goldberg Smell the Poetry, says, you've got to prime the well. we listen to the so songs and words of moving. Lauren keep Passarelli. Keep that going, and words are playing. Things pop out, and you look at it right now, you don't see it. You don't even think there's anything good there. You give it a couple hours or a few days or a month, and you go back when you've got a guitar idea that you don't know. What can I sing about? Let's see. Is there anything in here? There's something about attaching my attention to a word 
Hello, my name is Rick Flannery, and I am the chair of the Center School Reuse Advisory Team. With the upcoming opening of the Marathon Elementary School in the fall of 2018, the Board of Selectmen formed the Center School Reuse Advisory Team to explore the future of Center School. We will recommend a plan for the Center School building and property that will provide outside viewpoints on its use and development. This plan will outline the community's vision, your vision, for the future use of the property and produce recommendation for the board's consideration. Here at HCAM, they have asked you, what would you do if someone gave you a television station? The Center School Reuse Advisory Team is asking, what would you do with a school building? Please come and share your vision for the future of Center School with us at the first public forum on Saturday, February 3rd, 2018 at 10 a.m. at the Hopkins Senior Center. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you there. Dilly dilly. Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome back. Um, now to a, a little more serious and less, although it wasn't so bad. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about the State of the Union. I watched the whole Trump, I watched the commentators before yeah. um, the speech. I watched the speech. I watched uh, Joseph Kennedy III yeah. follow up. Um, so we have some we have some research that we did. We would love to hear your thoughts. Feedback, yeah. um, I have to say my general impression yeah. of Trump's presentation and speech and speech. Well, the presentation at first, um, his presentation was calm. Yeah. It looked much more presidential, yeah, presidential. than other things. Yeah. He wasn't sneering. Yeah. And and I have to say. Um, I have a, I love to laugh. Right, me too. I laugh every day at my job, mm -hmm. so things strike me funny. Me too. And not to be disrespectful, <laughs> but there's a guy <laughs> named Randy Rainbow oh, yes. who does some very funny, you know, did satires. He do one for that? No, but last <laughs> year there was a thing that Trump did when he was talking is he would go every time and talk right. talking and talk talking. Yeah. So this year I noticed that when he, he did it. that, no, yeah. he didn't. He had a, a slower intake of breath. Right. So anyway, his whole presentation it was, was much, presidential. Right. I, it looked like he might have lost some weight. Yeah. Um, so I was I was so happy because he is our president. Yeah. I was so happy to well, see him presenting. Well, his energy presenting. was much calmer. So his energy was saying. much calmer. That's what I'm saying. He's he presenting did. himself in yeah. a calm way, yeah. in a professional way. He was, you know, he wasn't, I just felt so reassured given that he is our president yeah that he looked presidential yeah he didn't look like a, a businessman trying to make a deal right he which is how was his background right so he was presenting it in a great way right he he had some very key phrases i took right. 10 pages of notes and he was talking about joining having by you know bipartisan agreements and and uh, I think that's, yeah, well, I think that wasn't as general. So. Yeah. But I think, you know, his overall leadership, I mean, like a lot of the stuff he said, I did agree with, but there, so you watched the speech too? Yeah, well, of course yeah, okay. I watched, yeah, oh, okay. I watched, I, I fell sure. asleep towards the end, but I did yeah. watch the speech. So, okay. um, but yeah, I, I thought what he was saying, it like Margie said, it looked more presidential. Oh, much. He, he was, better. you know, he seemed to you know, be hitting a lot of the topics that people are worried about. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with everything he says, but nobody's going to. But um, I'm going to let Margie um, talk about her notes, and then I actually did a bunch of fact checks because that's probably my well, biggest you issue. Well, you didn't do the fact checking. You found a website you know, I, oh, no, I that found, has the Yeah, I found a bunch checking. of websites. Yeah, yeah. But, but again, we looked at, you know, like both Margie and I looked at that, and I think probably my issue is a lot of times, and I know politicians lie, but they shouldn't, um, and even this speech writer, I mean, I know the person that wrote the speech, you want to make sure the information that comes across to the United States is accurate. But he, see, and again, I, I know his background is making the deal yep. and making the sale. So he wants to present the most positive, right. it's the hugest, it's the best, right. it's the, I'm the and least. And that's his, that's his that's trademark. That's his style. Yeah. So we understand that about him. Um, and, and, and that works for a lot of people. So we see more calm. Um, one, I, I wrote down some key phrases. He said he wants to make America great again for all Americans. Yes. He talked about the steel in America's spine and that challenges show what Americans can do. And again, I think when he uses the word steel, yeah. he's appealing to people in the steel industry. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. And then he said, um, 
He had a lot of people there who had been directly affected by the things he was talking about, some of which I thought, you know, my gosh, if I lost a child, do I want all the eyes of America on right. me while I'm sobbing because my child oh, died? I know. That kind of I went don't through know. me a lot. Yeah. So as a mom, I was like, mm. Ooh, yeah. But again, you know, he's trying to show, he's trying to illustrate, and he had really, really valuable illustrations for his point. Absolutely. And so, I thought it was very, you know, racially diverse i guess that's and, true and culturally diverse that is so true. that to me that's one thing i noticed that is, is very true the people that he had on he did that he showed that it was that it was racially diverse the that's only thing i had a little point. bit of a problem with is when he really singled out a gang and kind of well yeah i'm gonna get to that yeah you can get to that so but. so let me just say my review and then oh so sure anyway so he had a he had an officer who served at hurricane Har harvey yes uh, a female officer yeah he had a man a, a male officer who rescued some kids uh, went into um, a wildfire to rescue kids in California. Yes. And he, and another quote, we will, we always will pull through together. Um, although I'm not sure he did such a great job with Puerto Rico. Yeah. But anyway, well, FEMA we had, stepped out today delivering food and water. Today. Exactly. Yeah. So Steve Scalise was the rep uh, rep Republican majority whip that took a bullet in the back three weeks later back at work. So he's yep. pointing out all these people, yep. um, Capitol Police officers, Alexandria Police, um, doctors and nurses who saved lives um, after that shooting came together. So he's honoring them. Yep. Right. Um, quote, we called on everyone to come together. These are the people who were elected. We elected to serve. Then is another quote, America's most daring, fierce state of our union is strong because our people are strong. So we had a lot of yes. rhetoric that was very affirming of our right. strength, right. of our heroes. And I um, liked that as well. Yep. I liked hearing so that. So a lot of powerful, since the election, here's something that I know you're going to have a fact check response. Yes. He said, since our election, we've created 2.4 million new jobs, 200,000 manufacturing alone. Right. Tell me later that that's wrong. Right. Seeing raise, rising wages, unemployment's at a 45-year low. Yep. He's saying these things, and I'm thinking, that can't be true. Well, he, if, he referred it to the tax... Do you want to respond to each point? Should we do it that do way? Do you want to? Yeah. Sure. I mean, so the economy, I mean, they said the biggest tax cut in history, and that's that was untrue. Yeah. Um, so he... But I didn't... So he, what I said was, oh. since the election, he created 2.4 million new jobs. Right. So... Is that true? So we looked at that. It It is true, but it's not his administration. We're kind of on the... Tail end of yeah, Obama. Yeah, tail end of Obama. Right. And, and, and then that's okay. I mean, that's what government does. We, right. We work, you know, the, yep. the presidents work together. But I, I guess probably my issue was is, you know... That he really was taking credit for it, He's and where and totally. he, and that that's where I mean I think that's what makes the government feel divided. Right, is I think you need to give everybody credit. credit. Where I mean, do. it's not one person, it's Absolutely. not one one um, yep. party, it's everybody. Yep. So everybody's in the same boat right. to d make things better. Right. So you that's know, true because he spends a lot of time saying, "I did this." Or we we are so Trump much better than that other administration. Right, and I think which that's, he doesn't need to do. Well, and it's unfortunate because what I saw you know watching it is the body language with the Republicans compared to the Democrats it's just so cringe they're cringing well it's just so profound how divided it is and yes. divisive it is it, it just so, so the other one oh, African-American yeah. unemployment is at the lowest rate ever recorded yeah that didn't sound right to me right it, and you know it, he said it had fallen to a 6.8 in recent weeks the African-American unemployment and it's true but I think unemployment rates in general are over, are going down. Right. So I think that's connected and again, to that. again, from the Obama... Well, and I, I know, I mean, he can't take... I mean, he can take maybe some credit for it because he's been the president for a year, but the president has so little to do with that. And, right. and really, his policies have not come into play. Yeah. You know, and if anything, with Obama being an African-American or part African-American, he, he brought, you know, people saw it as you know i think it changed the way people looked at african-americans so and same with so, hispanics as yep, well I so i think minorities in a rule I as a rule i mean it's true right the I unemployment agree. rate is better but it's i don't necessarily say it's the i agree trim. and the other thing is i think i think he has had a positive effect on stock markets sure and but, one opinion of mine which is totally not right. based in fact is right. that 
he himself is investing more in the stock market. Right. His buddies Conflict are investing in yeah. order to yeah. say, hey, look what, what's happening. Right. I think there it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because they right. want it to look good, so right. they're making sure it does. But but it did drop 2% in the past two days. Right. You know? But also, you got to remember the stock market. Not everybody invests in it. So I've seen. I mean, no. I I invest very modestly, and I don't have a lot invested in it. But you know, like that, I see a little bit of a difference. But I mean, the people that are making money are the corporations. I mean, because business, they're selling right? their stocks. Yep. And I that really doesn't benefit you know the average person. And I you know. But anyway, go so ahead. So the other question yeah, is. Uh, so the other <laughs> thing so he wants about. to take. He wants <laughs> to take credit for is this tax package right which is some, it is something that he talked about a year ago right and then there was one commentator in like michigan because they went around the country and asked people a year later how do you still feel or right. do you feel the same and somebody said yes he's doing what he promised yep. so so he so the tax package um 401k and retirement pensions through the roof is one quote we enacted the biggest tax cuts and reforms in american right. history is another quote double the standard deduction for everyone first Twenty-four yeah, thousand for married, yeah. tax-free. Yeah. Double ch child tax credit. Seventy-four thousand will pay two thousand less tax. A more take-home pay, less tax. Eliminated tax on those who make less than fifty thousand. Yeah. Just because they don't have to have health care. Repeal the Obama requirement to have health care. Right. Slash business tax rate thirty-five percent to twenty-one percent. Average yeah. family is going to have a four thousand dollar increase in their income. Small right. business tax rates way down. Um, those are some of the things of the that's tax package. That's a false package. fact. I mean, that's false. Yep. So, so Reagan enacted um, tax cuts. Kennedy enacted tax cuts. Obama enacted tax cuts. So, right here, the fact check is is you know, and he did and he did change tax policy, but some of the tax cuts took away from biggest corporate tax cut in uh, history. I think that's that's more. Um, accurate, but also you got to look at what we're going to, the corporate, um, they keep their tax cuts, and in seven years we lose our tax cuts, and I have to feel that that's kind of ironic because they're assuming that he'll be in office for, for you know, seven, eight years maybe, or four years or whatever, but these tax cuts feel like, you know, we're borrowing I mean, why do we Absolutely. go into why do we go into debt for these tax cuts when well, our country is so rich? And right isn't now? there isn't but isn't there like isn't the deficit up to in the trillions oh, yeah, again? Yeah, it is because it was down. There was no deficit under Clinton, right? And then now it's creeping and creeping right. and creeping. Well, and after George Bush, the t the deficit went way up yeah, as well. Exactly. And then now it went down with Earth. Obama, and now it's going to go back up because yep, yep. we're giving tax cuts to honestly, I hate to say it to people that don't need it. Right. And, you know, I, I see that, you know, Walmart's saying they're hiring or they're giving bonuses, but then on the other hand, they're closing down 63 Sam's stores. So yes. I don't know if that information, I don't know if that's really going to help us all. Yep. You know, and it's, sure, it's nice to see money in your, your paycheck or whatever. I'll take it, I'm a contractor, so I'll take it less, you know, I won't be paying as much in taxes, hopefully. Well, um, who knows? I mean, yeah. I, I'm not sure until I see it in action. Right. And it doesn't go into effect until the, you know, it's a 2018. Right, it's 2018 doesn't taxes. doesn't last year. Right. Um, we have someone emailed the State of the Union fun facts that actually the way it works is the Speaker of the House invites, formally invites the President to the address. Ah. So it's a, it's a I request. I did not know that. From the Speaker of the House for the President to, to address come Congress and to the State of the Senate, Union, it yep. comes in the form of a letter sent several weeks prior. Interesting. You know, and one of the commentators leading up to it was that Melania Trump chose to go separately right. from the President before Which is he not went. Traditional, not yeah. traditional. Not yep. traditional. I did notice she was wearing all white yep. and has worn all white a few times. Right. Which is related to, I think. The um, Me Too movement. Me Too movement or or a statement about women. And so right. she's definitely sending some messages. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I think um, she's not as in the forefront as most um, first ladies, but I find her general demeanor welcoming. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, Trump is so, I find him abrasive um, and just the way he speaks. But I think she's very soft-spoken and she's trying to, Balance in, in certain ways. I mean, I think it's interesting that she was bringing forward um, bullying. And I, I, I truly think Trump, that's one of his worst traits, is that he bullies people. 
I mean, the things mm -hmm. he says about people, it's very disparaging. And, you know, I mean, it's uncalled for and it's unpresidential. And that's something that probably well, he, he's not he's he refer. He did not do yeah. that in the State of the okay. Union, which I know we're talking about. But now someone on Facebook told us regarding the deficit, we paid for a war. Yes. So that's how the deficit increased. Right. Um, we have about two minutes to talk. Um, most State of the Union speeches go through two, 20 drafts um, because it really needs to reach the world. Right, it um, does. And people pay attention. President of the United States, supposedly the, the most important country or leader, world leader right. was. Um, Bill Clinton delivered the longest lasting State of the Union speech, yep. um, lasted an hour and a half. Um, Trump's was pretty close to that. Yeah, they. I heard I the grapevine. It was third. Hours. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he talks some more about some of the successes in businesses. Um, <laughs> had some more people, and and in some of the, his rhetoric about the dreamers. Yeah. So he said, um, Americans never been a dreamers. better time to live the American dream. You can dream anything and be anything, and together can achieve absolutely anything. Same home, same heart, same destiny, same great American flag. So. And he said and Americans little, are dreamers too. That was so, the thing that so stuck to out me, with me. That kind of demeans. The the, well, the, the efforts of the dreamers, right? Because they that's a whole different issue, right. um, because they came here. Well, and then back to our football thing, he was attacking football players in well, a slighted in way, the, right? You know, because saying the that flag. if they kneel, you know, yep. to the flag, and, the, and we did have that yep. on a prior show yep. to talk about what what right. But some of the I think some of the you things know. that appeal to to people mm -hmm. were when he talked about strengthening the right. immigration. Um, authority, yep. you know, fixing the laws. And I agree with ICE, that. I right? think people should immigrate legally. And he did talk about and... the MS-13 gang and the drugs and gangs. Yep. And and he's right. Yeah. But that doesn't, that's not saying all immigrants go into right. a gang, which is what his implication is. Right. That's what people have a, have a difficulty with. Right. Um, America helps needy struggling mm -hmm. all over the world, yep. but has greatest concern and compassion for our people. So he did well in presenting that. Right. Joe Kennedy's response um, talked about the highest American ideal, yes, better deal for all who call our country home. Education, and we all are immigrants at some point. But that's what he's saying. Yeah. We all, yeah, call our country home for education, healthcare, infrastructure, economy, fair wages, equality. So he was talking about we are all worthy, Joe right. Kennedy, regardless of our job, color of our right. skin, God we pray to. That is the American promise. Exactly. So two different points of view. Right. Um, and, and his and watch his speech. Yeah. I found it. I mean, granted, I check it out for yourselves. Yeah. Um, and let's just hope for the best. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the dance, Mike. That yeah, was awesome. That was